Since March of 2022, the Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates and simultaneously destroying my net worth. The interest rates have hiked from 0.08% in February of 2022 all the way up to 3.25% as of the recording of this video. And for anyone unfamiliar with what interest rates are, let's get that out of the way first. But also real quick, for anyone not familiar with financial advice, this is not financial advice. I'm just a guy on YouTube trying to teach you about interest rates. Don't go make some crazy financial decision based on this video or really any other video on YouTube, go instead consult a financial professional. Now that that's out of the way, basically an interest rate is just how expensive it is to borrow money. So in February of 2022, it cost 0.08% interest to borrow money. And today in October of 2022, it costs about 3.25% to borrow the same money. So if I was a bank and I wanted to borrow a million dollars from the Federal Reserve back in February, it would only cost me $800 per year to borrow a million dollars from the Federal Reserve. $800, I have that kind of money, that's crazy. But today I'm the same exact bank borrowing the same exact million dollars from the same exact Federal Reserve. It would now cost me $32,500 per year to borrow that same $1 million, which is more than 40 times as much money per year that you're paying in interest. Since banks are not very risky, they're able to borrow very close to that rate that the Federal Reserve is setting, in this case, 3.25%. But you and me, we are way riskier than a bank is. So if a bank is going to lend money to you or me, the interest rate that they receive on that loan has to be a lot higher to compensate them for the risk of investing to schmucks like you and I, because we might not have the money to pay back the loan. For example, if you or I want to get a 30 year fixed rate mortgage today, we don't get a 3.25% interest loan because we're risky. Today, if we took out a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, our interest rate on the mortgage would be about 7%. And mortgages are relatively not risky compared to other investments because at the end of the day, if you or I default on our mortgage, the bank still gets to keep the house. And the house is probably worth something. But if we're taking out a personal loan that's unsecured by any collateral, there's nothing that the bank gets if we default on the loan. We would have to pay more than 10% interest today when the federal funds rate is only 3.2% because of that extra risk premium. And if you and I were career criminals that were known for not paying back our loans, the bank might lend us money, but they would go, yeah, I'll lend you money for 200% interest. Or maybe we're so risky that they don't even wanna lend to us. So basically the riskier the loan, the higher the interest rate has to be to compensate the lender for the risk. And again, when we hear this 3.25% interest rate number from the Fed, that doesn't mean that you and I get to borrow at 3.25% interest. It means that banks get to borrow at 3.25% interest and we are all downstream and more risky than banks are. So we're having to take up even higher interest rates than that. So can the Fed just raise interest rates forever? They can try, but at some point, the entire global economy will collapse. And we're already seeing some signs of this with what's happening over in the UK with the pension system and to some of these larger banks like Credit Suisse that just don't look like they're doing very well right now. The reasons for these collapses can get kind of complicated and that topic probably deserves its own video, but basically very small increases in the interest rate can cause very large swings in volatility for these financial institutions. Because the dirty secret is a lot of these these financial institutions are taking on a ton of leverage. So maybe a 1% move causes a 20 or an 100% move in their positions. I was on Twitter a couple days ago and I saw a great clip relating to this topic from the movie Margin Call that I'll leave down in the description. Definitely go watch it, great movie. Luckily for us, there's a super basic way to see why they can't just raise interest rates forever. The total national debt in America is about 30 and a half trillion dollars. So the very basic math that we can do that removes some nuance from this topic, but the that does give us a number to you know where they have to stop at is we can just take that federal funds rate of 3.25% and multiply it by the national debt. So 30 and a half trillion times 3.25% gives us about a trillion dollars, which means that every year that interest rates are 3.25%, the US needs to pay about a trillion dollars just in interest on the national debt. In reality, these numbers are not exact because there are parts of the debt that are not variable rate interest 
interest. So when the Fed raises interest rates, some of those debt obligations don't change their interest rates. So this is not hard and fast math, but it's a way for us to sort of think about, okay, well, how close can they get? And if we do do just these straight line projections, where does that take us? And can we develop some sort of upper bound for where we think they really can't raise interest rates above that? So at current interest rates, the United States will have to pay about a trillion dollars a year just to service the massive 30 and a half trillion dollar debt. And a trillion is a big number, but nothing is impossible when we all work together. So go down below and smash the like button. And when we get to 1 trillion likes, I will donate $100 of my own money to help the United States bring down the national debt. Every dollar counts, guys. God bless America. Okay, so $1 trillion a year in interest up from $25 billion back in February. That sounds like a lot, but how much is it really? Let's compare that to the amount of money that the United States collects in taxes every year. In 2021, the federal government collected a record high tax receipt of $4 trillion. It's unlikely that they will collect $4 trillion again this year. They'll probably collect a little bit less than that because capital gains this year have been nowhere near as high as they were back in 2021. So it'll probably be lower this year in 2022, but let's pretend just for the sake of arguments that it's still going to be $4 trillion. So if they collect another $4 trillion in taxes this year, that means that one quarter of total government money that they're taking in this year will be immediately spent on interest servicing the debt. So how much higher could interest rates feasibly go? If we again just do the very basic, very stupid math of multiply the interest rate by four, we now get to 13% as the federal fund rate. 13% for a federal funds rate multiplied by 30 and a half trillion dollars gets you to about $4 trillion of interest expense every year, which is again, the same amount that the United States is taking in from tax receipts. So that would mean that at 13% interest, the government taxes all of us to get their money to spend for the year and that money is immediately gone to go spend on interest servicing the debt. So before any amount of spending, before Social Security, before Medicare, before Medicaid, before the defense spending, before infrastructure, before chips manufacturing, before any of these things, all of the money from all of the tax receipts would be gone out the window just to service the 30 and a half trillion dollars of debt. So it seems like it's very unlikely that we'll see something like a 13% federal funds rate. And it's just like running up a giant bill in your credit card. If your credit card interest is 20% and you only make $4,000 a month, eventually, if you spend too much, more and more percentages of your paycheck every month just go to servicing the interest on your credit card. And then when you inevitably can't pay it off, that number on the credit card gets higher and higher and higher. The national debt gets higher and higher and higher. And now 13% times a $35 trillion national debt looks a lot different and it's more money than you were bringing in before from tax receipts. So it seems very unlikely that we'll see something like 13%. And again, 13% was a very basic straight line projection and a lot more complicated stuff would break and those numbers are not exactly accurate, but I think it gives us a good upper bound of what could even be possible and what's feasible for the country right now. If we do a little bit more historical analysis on interest rates, we can see that since 1981, when the Fed raised interest rates all the way up to about 19 We've been making lower and lower highs in interest rates over time. However, this time the Fed seems determined to raise rates above where they were back in 2019. And the last time they raised rates this high was right before the great financial crisis back in 2008. Interest rates went up to 5.25%. Mortgage rates went up even higher like we talked about earlier. Housing prices collapsed. So people that were super leveraged ended up underwater on their properties. And people with variable rate mortgages got priced out of their homes because as the federal funds rate goes up, those people with variable rate mortgages, their interest rate on their mortgage goes up and they become unable to make those monthly payments. It doesn't seem like there's that much leverage in the housing market this time like there was back in 2008, but time will tell. It's like the famous Warren Buffett quote, it's only when the tide goes out that you see who has been swimming naked, which basically means that until it hits the fan, we're not going to see which of these financial institutions and which of these real estate markets where all of this leverage has built up in the system and where it starts to unwind. And the bottom line to all of this is that every incremental point increase of the federal funds rate triggers new leverage unwinds across the financial system. And if the Fed continues to raise interest rates, it's only a matter of time before one of those tightly wound pieces of leverage somewhere in the financial system unwinds and crashes a bunch of stuff. Hopefully this video helped you guys understand 
understand a little bit better what the implications are of the Fed raising and lowering interest rates and what the hard tangible limitations are to how high they can raise the interest rate. If you guys want to learn more about how interest rate hikes could end up crashing the housing market, definitely go down below and leave a comment and I'll work on a video to share some of those numbers with you guys. Also, let me know if you have any questions. I do still respond to all the comments. If this video is too negative for you guys, definitely go over here and check out this video I did a couple weeks ago on options for millennial retirement. Hopefully that can give you a bit of a lift and give you some ideas for options of how to navigate these crazy times. I love you all. See you next week.